first year when i was in first year i didn't hear about gsoc and all of that but by the time i applied and i came to know what exactly it is in discovering different organizations um, the time was up so hi everyone today we have a special guest on our channel we have sunaina with us so sunaina would you like to introduce yourself yeah hi guys so i'm sunaina i am i just finished second year at avu and i'm pursuing btech computer science and uh, that's about me yeah and sunaina has cracked gsoc which is a very prestigious thing to do so we'll be talking all about that so before we start sunaina for the viewers who are interested but don't know much about it what is gsoc why is it important can you explain that once uh so yeah gsoc is basically google summer of code and um it is an internship summer internship done by google every year it's been 20 years now and um, basically there are a bunch of organizations that say okay we want to participate then google will select few of them after that once a an organization is selected um, the organization mentors will basically select the contributors that are contributing to each project and in an organization you have multiple projects but the thing is for each project only one contributor is selected and all of this is open source so for me i think or uh, for anyone it's like a great learning experience and you have you, you have like a lot to learn and no one gives you that opportunity when you first go into a job i think even ashish yeah. can uh, relate to that right like that's what whenever i talk to even my school teachers or professors they're just like yeah no one gives you that opportunity to run their code base to check for bugs complicated things you can go as in depth as you want so i think that's very cool for me and uh, there's no like lacking system that oh you have to like first complete your masters and then you can do this project you know this project you know, it's just very free open if you're smart and okay even if you're not smart if you can learn and do it then you can do it so that's very cool for me what about the benefits associated with gsoc because i feel like there's a good monetary benefit along with it and what about the like uh, future benefits like will it help in the future placements things like that okay yeah definitely so first uh, i'll talk about like if this does have a stipend right mm -hmm. uh, anyone who's getting selected is not doing it for free so basically there are like three types of projects that will be listed in the organization for each project it will be listed in the idea list you go to any website it will be listed on how big the project is whether it's small whether it's medium or large mm -hmm. so small will be like 650 dollars if i'm not wrong and then medium is like 1500 dollars and the largest 3000 and this is given to you once you complete the project so one is like a mid review mm. once they see mm. that and you have so much progress done then you can like you get paid and then once you finish it you get like the remaining paid 50% then and um, one more thing is yeah why is it helpful in the case so basically there are this year at least uh, as per my knowledge around 43000 people applied mm. over the globe mm. and only 1220 students got selected so it's definitely a good thing and second thing is the google tag yeah. but more yeah. than that i think it's the process right like um, you become different and you become better because you learn so many things in the process it's not just that oh you got selected but after that as well like you learn so much in the journey of getting selected and after till you finish the project awesome. itself that is one big thing and the second thing is like you get to network to so many you get access to network at least to so many amazing people so my mentor so i basically got selected in this organization called uh, ccx chapter i'm contributing there and the organization admin his name is carlos and he is like so sweet and so nice and he works at meta in san francisco wow. so now he knows how i work and i know him through slack of course i don't have his number or anything but we've connected on linkedin as well and we kind of know each other now to a level he knows my work he knows my ability and now he can give me a referral maybe in the future so stuff like that you do get access to a lot of people willing to help you you know it's it's not paid for them it's not paid uh, they're doing that out of their free time this is not their job so that is one key thing like getting access to people like that so please like even if you are contributing to open source one key thing i would really specify is respect their time 
don't just uh, ask random questions i know it's hard <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, one more thing is there's no hand holding in this process no one's going to hold mm-hmm. your hand and tell you this is what you're going to do read documentation read everything up four five times if you don't understand only them ask them about it cuz you know they also have a lot of work <laughs> and one yeah so that's the thing i guess mostly that's about it and one more thing i'd like to mention is documentation is written for you so read it right uh, it's not written for anyone else so that is something uh, yeah one more thing i would like to add is whenever you see any youtube video i went through a, a lot of them when i was uh, preparing and i was going through it uh, you would see a lot of people teaching you how to make pull requests because of course that is one important part of open source uh, but it's not the only thing okay um i would say that there are a lot of new projects as well there's old projects that you have to know about and you have to like you know get into it fix issues bugs and only then you can make features and that's how they trust you to add features and get into the project or get selected but otherwise it's just there's a lot of new projects so for new projects what is the step or what is your thing and so like that i think i'll start with my journey and tell you as it is so for me i started in um, november last year and so first year when i was in first year i didn't hear about gsoc and all of that but by the time i applied and i came to know what exactly it is in discovering different organizations um, the time was up then this then the next year i was like you know what i should actually give it a try and um, so november i started like seriously and i would try doing it every day in the sense first i learned my basics that is how do you operate with github what is git actions what is pull request how do you clone how do you merge what is pr everything um, then after that uh, i was contributing to two organizations that is iv and cloud kv something like that so those two organizations are ai based my interest is in ai ml and uh, i did do quite a few projects in ai so i was very like confident that yeah this is the way to go and maybe this is what is for me and everything like that uh started doing it made few document um, documentation pull requests and all of that changes got accepted then i started getting into the code code what happened was the code base was very huge so i uh, tried i definitely tried for a month one and a half month i did try and then uh, when i felt it was difficult i blamed it on myself saying that okay you're not smart enough and this is as bad as it gets and that's why it's so hard to crack and then i did talk to my professors so one thing is reach out to people uh, even if you have seniors so for me it's actually like we are the first batch so unfortunately we don't have seniors but if you have like good professors you can reach out to them as well so i reached out to professors and they were like yeah for uh, i don't think this is big enough friendly and uh, maybe look at different organizations and something like that and i was like okay i was taken back then i went through youtube videos and what they said was usually these ai ml based domain organizations uh, look for research um, in terms or research people like who are doing the phd or someone like that because most of the features added will be research based which made sense and then i said if i have to compete with them i know my value is not going to be as much as theirs right so i can't provide as much value as it's needed so then uh, i decided to pivot uh, and one more thing was also in the beginning when you get into an organization when you look through their website please check if there is slack discord or zulip anything like that so you can get connected otherwise it's just not going to be it so yeah stay connected to the community if you are not able to connect to the community i would suggest shift it's okay so in january i was like no i need to pivot and i just looked up different organizations so when you're looking okay if your keen interest is gsoc and you want to do that so i would suggest that you look up organizations that have been coming for the last 3 to 4 years or even 5 years okay and also look at the number of projects they are able to give or number of projects that have been successful so, so yeah 
then i uh, so started searching and all of that i came across two more organizations one of them was cc extractor so when i got into cc mm-hmm. extractor uh, basically like there were a bunch of projects right and um, then i saw there were a lot of new projects as well as old mm-hmm. okay and in the website itself they had mentioned that uh, you don't have you know because we have a lot of new projects you don't it's not necessary at least for you to make pull requests and get into different projects because it doesn't make sense right you learning a lot in in depth of another project might not help you starting a new project so what they had done is they gave us like a qualification tasks sort of a thing there's a bunch of tasks and you can choose from that and they did specify like maybe projects that um you need to learn flutter or you need to have flutter based projects they all will have qualification tasks of flutters and those qualification tasks are basically mini projects sort of like that so mine i did um, one project that's like it takes a csv data from an app called my fitness pal and then you uh, put it to a dashboard using grafana and i did this like in a week or so and i told the mentor that to, uh, i'm done and uh, pushed it on github on my github and then uh, got it reviewed the mentor and i was like okay great and then i was like okay maybe i should do another uh, task because i have time and then i was like there was another v- rsvp um, project and i asked my mentor so how do i start with this should i start with this and he was like no you know what if and i told him that i'm interested in your other shortna project and he was like no no don't do another task um that's enough you start building your proposal for url shortener because it's a lot on design and it's like it requires to be scalable and all of that yeah, so i started uh, he was like start building a proposal and i was like okay so what they usually do is they only give you if it's a new project they give you like a list of requirements and they tell you the problem statement after that it's like a proposal in the sense okay uh, one more thing so when you uh, any contributor has to provide a proposal based on the proposal you are selected okay so that is basically like um, it can be from 10 pages to 30 pages don't exceed that and uh, what they expect you to do is like first describe the question and whatever project or problem statement then give one abstract of it then maybe go deeper in the sense um, like what tech stack are you using why are you using cost of the project was also expected from me then they asked system architecture so flow diagrams i made like a ton of flow, flow diagrams on each thing how it's going then server how it's connecting how is it uh, doing it in the server side client side what exactly is happening um so all flow diagrams this that in detail as much as possible also when you are like connecting right you say like i'm using cloudflare for deploying and everything like that so when you're saying okay you're connecting cloudflare to a database then you would also be like it would be better if you saw some documentation and put snippets of that or links of that so they know you've gone through and this is the code you're going to be using this is what you're going to be referencing so as in depth as you can you have to do it so that way it gives you an edge okay that is one second thing is try doing the project before in hand or at least the ground work of the project before so that they know that you're interested and you're going to be quicker than other people and you understand the concepts before itself so for me i think ground work that is you are a shortener basic you are a shortener that is deployed and scalable i finished it before and i had put that in uh, my proposal i linked it up as well on my github and i sent it to them so that is one and um, yeah so after that basically it's also luck you cannot say <laughs> oh it is just hard work right so and yeah one more thing is uh, it depends that if your project is important to your organization or not okay mine was not an important project uh, actually that's a funny story because like my mentor whenever i spoke to him that i was like i'm very interested in your short note i'd ask him like a bunch of doubts he would be like my suggestion is for you to pivot don't do this because they did have like a bad experience in the past yeah so after i submitted i was not very confident because a lot of people submitted and uh, the thing was because mine was a website it's usually very uh, attention seeking people are like 
say, okay, it's easy. So everyone wants to try it, right? It's a first, it's a nice thing to try out and to start out with. So a lot of people applied in mine. So that was the situation. But yeah, everybody is has their own strengths. If you know system designing very well, if you like building your own projects a lot, for me, I think I built two personal projects um, back when third sem, after third sem, there was a break and I built it that time and it was very fun for me and I learned a lot of system designing that time when, you know, you get into it. You don't just copy someone's or clone someone, you try it on your own. So you realize a lot. So for me, that was fun than just making, you know, pull requests to an existing project maybe. <laughs> I don't connect to me. So maybe that's that. Like that was my strength. And now if I think back, I realize it. And for some people, their strength is just, you know, making advanced, amazing features to an already existing project. And uh, yeah, I think that was like my whole journey towards it. So for CC Extractor, I basically I started in January. And January, February, March, April, I submitted the proposal. April mm-hmm. is first. And uh, one more thing was, it's okay, like, you know, make sure and pray for the best project to win. And um, it's not very hard. Give it a shot. You never know. You definitely never know. Like, I would have never uh, believed it or seen it if I never tried it. So, yeah, if you told my past self that, oh, you're getting selected, she wouldn't believe it. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Okay, so I guess that covers pretty much everything about GSOC and how one can go about cracking GSOC. So thanks a lot, Sunana, for coming on my channel and sharing your journey. And if anyone still has any doubts or if they're interested in cracking GSOC, then I've given Sunana's LinkedIn in the description. She has also written a few detailed blogs. You can check them out and you can connect with her on LinkedIn if you have any doubts. So again, thanks a lot, Sunana. And yeah, hope to see you again on the channel.